Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. So today we are going to start with some microservices basic brief tutorials and then we can quickly move ahead towards the microservices interview question so that at least some basics are clear for us. For this particular tutorial, we are going to take a simple example of a very real time scenario right now that is the vaccination centers and the user base. Now for that, implementing that particular scenario, what people might have options to do that. So there might be two options, either they create a monolithic application or they create a microservices architecture. So let's first understand how a monolithic application is, uh, is there in the market and why that was not uh, that good and that is why microservices came into picture. So let's first understand why monolithic application and what is monolithic application. So monothic application is nothing but an application built as a whole soul single unit as a single component. So basically such applications usually have three, three layers, main three layers that is the client layer which is usually done with Angular or React or JSP servlets that the, the UI depends upon you. Then you have server side applications layer like for example we have Spring Boot, Spring MVC, the whole and soul server side layer. Then we have a database which is used to have your data. Say for example, in our case, we are going to have the data for not only the vaccination centers, but also we are going to have the data for the user base. So there is one single database connected to server side application, which is uh, actually interacting with client side interface, like for Angular to get the data to and from the database. So that's a very basic architecture of monolith application. And basically you understand now that monolith application is a very large code base and it lacks modularity. So let's see the monolithic application architecture. So if you are a client, say for example, you are trying to register yourself into the Coven site and you want to book a slot at the vaccination center. So you are the client, you have a browser in place. This presentation layer is your Coven website. So coven.gov.in is your presentation layer, which internally might have interacted with the controller layer. If it would have been a monolithic application, we don't know what it is basically, but if it would have been a monolith application, it would have connected with the controller layer, which is capable enough to handle all your REST API calls. Like for example, get the vaccination centers, fetch the slot timings, anything, everything. So all the REST APIs are here. Then you have business logic here. Say for example, open the registrations only for the age greater than 45. So all these business logics goes into business layer. Then you have your POJOs like user. So when you try to register, your POJO is converted into a row in a table of user base that is done with this particular repository layer, which is nothing but an interface between your Java logic and your tables or the database logic. So that's the repository layer for you. So this is basic mono, monolithic application architecture. And the disadvantage first I'll tell you here only is that now if they say the government says that put only co vaccines for age between 45 to 18, what you will do, you will put all your logics here. So as in when government starts increasing your logics, your business layer starts to get thick, thick and thick. So you not only have to handle all the business logics for the vaccination centers, but also for the user base. So this is the disadvantage here. We'll cover disadvantages right now. So basically you understand that the code base gets larger in size with time and hence it's very difficult to manage them. It's very difficult to introduce new technology as it affects the whole application. So if you have a monolithic application in a very old uh, fashioned technologies like JSP servlets, if you want to make it to Spring Boot, it's very difficult now. You can't, you have to rewrite whole and sole your application. If a single bug comes in any module, whole application is down because it gives you some error exception and your whole application is down. So suppose if you have a vaccination center down, even your your user module, you, will, you won't even be able to register yourself into Coven website. So that's the disadvantage. A single bug in any single module lets down your whole application. Now it is very difficult to scale a single module because you have to scale the whole application and continuous de deployments is extremely difficult. Why? Because large monolithic applications are usually an obstacle to frequent deployments. If even you have to update one module, so suppose government says now open the registrations for age of 18 to 45. So only user module or user table has to be modified. But then even uh, you have to redeploy if you have a monolith application, the whole entire application, which even affects your vaccination centers. So that's a difficulty in continuous deployments of even a small module. 
Now, what are microservices? So now we understand why the monolith applications are difficult to handle. So let's see what, uh, what are microservices first. So while monolith application works as a whole and sole single component, microservice architecture breaks it down into independent, standalone, small applications, each serving one particular requirement. Say for example, I have two requirements right now, only two. Uh, we are going to take a very simple example and we are going to scale it more and more as far as you require. So in this example, I can have one microservice handling all vaccination centers and one for handling all the user base. So within this microservice architecture, the entire functionality is split into independent deployable modules. So one module, you can say my user module, one module, you can say my vaccination center module. So these communicate with each other through some ways. So the usual way is the RESTful web services. You can also use messaging to con convey or communicate between them. So let's quickly see the microservice architecture. This is a very high level microservice architecture. It's not as it looks, but in the theoretical way, you can see this, but I'm going to add many more components to these. So let's see the very high overview. So this is a UI. So suppose it's an Angular. If this is a UI, it interacts with your services. It calls your particular microservice. That particular microservice interact with each other through RESTful web services and they might have different databases having their own tables and databases. They might even share a common database. Currently, I am considering that they have different databases. Apart from that, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, have the API gateway as a layer between it. So UI interacts with API gateway. API gateway routes you to a particular web service depending upon the routing functionality you have given in the API gateway, which are going to see in a few seconds. We are also going to have the Eureka service for the service discovery. I'll tell you why. So let's see the advantages of microservice architecture first. So all the services are independent of each other. Therefore, testing and deployment are as easy as compared to the monolith applications because they are independent. You can deploy each of them independently. So suppose I want to have service one deployed. You can have service two and service three in place. You could just deploy service one and you are good to go with them. If there is one bug in one microservices, it will not impact the whole application. Say, for example, if your vaccination center is down, you don't have to wait for your users to register to your application. They can still register because that's a standalone functionality and module. It's not dependent upon vaccination center at all. They are deployed independently. So one goes down, another is not affected. That's the benefit, a very big benefit of microservices architecture. Now with microservice architecture, it's very easy to build your complex applications because understanding and deploying whole complex application in one single unit is very difficult. But when you divide your whole complex application to small, small applications and modules, it is very easy. And you can actually delegate those uh, small, small applications to one person in a team and you can easily de uh, deploy and uh, develop them. It also gives flexibility to choose the technology. So suppose if in the team you have one person with a different technology and uh, one with a different technology and framework, you still can use them to create your different microservice architecture. It's just that they should interact with each other through any medium. RESTful web services or messaging, it doesn't matter. So your technology and framework is no more a hurdle to you. You don't have to develop each and every functionality in only one single framework. Time being, we are going to use uh, Spring Boot only, but you can use anything that you want to. Now, the very first important question, in any interview question they ask you is, if you have a monolith application, how would you, how, what will be your approach to convert it into a microservice application? So the very first thing that you need to uh, start up with that is that if you have a monolithic application, you need to identify all possible standalone functionalities and modules. Say, so for example, if you have vaccination centers and users as a whole application to be created, what you will be doing, you will find out all the first standalone functionality. So I can say my users are independent and my vaccination centers are independent. So I can say I have broadly only two functionalities to be implemented. That is one microservice architecture, one microservice application for users, one microservice uh, application for vaccination centers. Now, once we have identified that, you need to create standalone projects. Currently, we are going to use Spring Boot because these are the rapid application development technology we have in the market right now. So we're going to use Spring Boot to create these microservices. You can use anything that you want to. It's just that they, they should interact with each other. Now, if you want to interact with them, then there should be some way to do that. So it can be the REST APIs or messaging. I am going to use RESTful web services because it's easy for me to. You can use anything that you want to. But just doing this is not enough 
and it's not actually enough to say to your interviewer that yes i have defined my functionality i am good to go with microsoft Office architecture no it's just the, he will at the at the end he will say that they are just two restful web services interacting with rest apis so they, this is not a microservice architecture at all so to make this a proper restful uh, web services implemented into your microservices you need proper load balancers you need eureka for service discovery which is actually useful when when you have the load balancing in place you have cloud deployments then these applications are not just interacting with each other they are actually interacting with eureka for the service discovery in many more ways you have api gateways and many more stuff to make sure that your web services are capable enough to interact even at the cloud environment so this is not just enough to create a spring boot application and interact with the rest apis he'll for sure say that no this is not microservice architecture these are restful web services that you have created you need different tools and technologies to make them a successful microservice architecture which we are going to see in few seconds so let's get started in year 2020 linkedin filtered out top 10 startups and in those top 10 startups we have five of them that is a grand razer pay grand urban company yellow messenger but cracking these five companies are very tough because you have only two options till now the first one was on campus second one was off campus but for on campus part they hired only from tier 1 campuses and colleges that is iits and iims in case of off campus for even one single vacancy they receive lots of resumes so your resume getting shortlisted the chances of that is very less so there is now a third option also for you that is the relevel came up by on academy came up with this particular opportunity that you don't need a strong resume for the same what you just need to do is to apply for the stone nomin clear the stone nomin so register before 22nd of june here you have to face five challenges and as soon as you clear them you will get something called as relevel score with this particular relevel score you will be capable enough to apply for these companies but to apply and to become a part of it you need to pay 2000 rupees but with the link given below in the description and with the code that is code10 you will be able to get 10% discount but register before 22nd of june that's where the registration ends okay so let's first see what we are going to do actually we are going to do nothing but we are going to actually create three services very first is vaccination service center this is this is basically a microservice which is used to handle all your api calls for vaccination centers so adding a vaccination center removing deleting updating and all basic operations then we have one more microservice that we are going to create as a spring boot application which is a user service which is going to handle all your user operations there will be something called as eureka which is discovery service now what happens if when you are you have created two applications as a restful web services but now when you are doing load balancing so you also know that even in your uh, if if you have an, worked upon any application which is deployed in production your one single server is not capable enough to handle all your request what what will you be doing you going to create the replica of each application on different servers so that even if one server is down another server is capable enough to handle your request in that case you have load balancing done in case of microservices and if you have load balancing done now if if now i'm going to give you one simple use case okay you are a user you are registering to vaccination center now we are going to see from the perspective of vaccination center admin what vaccination center admin wants to do is to see what all users are today going to come at your vaccination center or what are users have scheduled or uh, actually reserved a slot at your vaccination center at that particular case you need to hit your api with a particular user uh, uh, vaccination center and fetch all the list of users in that case you need localhost http colon slash slash uh, the port number say 8081 user service then what will happen if that particular 8081 port is not working and you have load balance to 8082 or 8083 what will happen your request will fail in that case when it is either load balanced or when it is deployed on cloud you have a different ip address when your instance is restarted are you going to configure each of those urls into your vaccination service center no you cannot do that so in that particular case eureka comes into picture what eureka do is you just give me the name of service that you want to hit i will give you the url which is load balanced which does not have much request right now to handle which is free and which is working i will give you the uh, url then you hit that particular url so that is eureka for you 
it handles your load balancing situations it handles your dynamic urls so whenever you go to cloud you deploy you have dynamic urls that particular thing is handled by eureka for you so what we will be going to do is we are going to hit a particular uh, url and going to show you how you are not going to do localhost 8080 it's no more localhost 8080 it's the server service name so i'll say http colon slash slash vaccination center slash add or find use it so in that case you are going to hit eureka first eureka is going to see okay you need vaccination center go here you need user service go here so that's eureka server for you okay so in the next video we are going to create all these three services as a spring boot applications and we will see how these two services vaccination center and user service will interact with each other and how they are going to register themselves to eureka so let's see in the next video thank you